Greetings everyone. I am experimenting with a new editing software and so the clip on the screen um, you will notice that you know my lips are not matching the words that I'm speaking here. Uh, that's because it's a voiceover. Okay the topic for today is um, 10 warning signs of blatant narcissism. Now many of us have to deal with narcissists and if we truly understood or was able to identify this clear signs of a narcissist, we would avoid so much unnecessary pain. And so I'm going to give this to you. Now, if you have these narcissistic tendencies in yourself, you know, you can work to, to fix them. So, um, you know, not to adjust yourself to fit other people, but to understand how you impact others with your attitude. So the first one is uh, an individual, first of all, let me explain this to you and make it very clear. I'll give you an idea of who a narcissist is. So a person who is a narcissist is a person who is incapable of adapting um, their mind to the idea that someone else can have a different opinion than themselves. They are very good at invalidating um, other persons, but they always want to force you to accept who they are. They have the sense of superiority. They are entitled or they have an attitude of entitlement. They tend to be low in empathy. And when we talk about empathy, people think that if someone, you know, is sharing their things with you or sh is able to show generosity, that that, that person, um, you know, thereby knows how to be empathetic but there are some people who are generous but they're not empathetic these individuals are high control people they have to control everyone and every situation they find themselves in they are not interested in having a relationship with you they always see you as competition okay so in general this is what you know um a narcissist it's like, so let's look at the 10 clear signs of a narcissist. Number one, as I said, they are very controlling. They want to control every situation and every person that is around them. Number two, they get very close to people very quickly. Very quickly. If it's a romantic situation, it gets very intense. You go on a date and before you know it, they're starting to call you babe. They're starting to tell you what you should be wearing, start to try to change you to fit into their mold. And they constantly want affirmation. So even when they go out of their way and do things for you and you don't ask them to, they want you to constantly tell them how wonderful, how good they are. You can say it a million times, it's never going to be enough. Number three, they're prone towards exaggerated emotions they cry at the drop of a hat and they can also show anger or impatience or irritability at the drop of a hat and they are not open to change and they will always tell you that they're not open to change but they want to change everybody else number four they're self-absorbed they do nice things but you will hear about it you will hear how wonderful they are for the rest of your life. Number five, they're impressed by physical beauty. You know, clothes and image and association is very important to these ones. Number six, they're driven by materialism, elitism. They will tell you about all the important or rich people that they know or they're associated with. Their importance goes up based on who they think their friends are. And so there's no humility. And so they want to be seen and, you know, be heard at all times. Number seven, they constantly hijack conversation. They manage to make it always be about themselves. So if you want to share your pain or your suffering or your struggles or your triumph or anything, they will turn that around and make it be about them. Number eight, um, they have to be in charge they have, must have the final authority over everything. They accept no one's advice, only their opinion matters. And they must always have the final say. Number nine, pathologically offensive. So this 
works both ways where they're always offending other folks and you know other these guys that they're just being honest or straightforward but they are very disrespectful in that way but at the same time they're very sensitive very thin skin so the simplest thing you say even if you had no ill intention they will make that they'll make a mountain out of a hill um, they will say you're putting them down. You're saying you're jealous of them. They'll say you hate them even when you bring constructive criticism to these ones. Always make it into something negative. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Number 10. They have a long record of broken relationships. And it's always someone else's fault. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's easy to get caught up in their euphoria. There was this fantastic idea, fantastic, you know, stories about how great they are. And people tend to be drawn to them and would like these ones. But they have a pattern of ignoring other person's feelings <clears throat> and so on. They're not good for you. You will be never you will never be seen as their equal. They don't know how to maintain anyone's dignity, civility, or respect. These three words, they don't understand it. They care about one person and one person only. And that is a narcissist way. So whenever you're dealing with people and you're noticing that, you know, they always manage to make something that is very simple, a simple conversation become a big argument a simple disagreement becomes something that you're wondering where did this go it you know can go from zero to 100 in a second and it's always about them you'll never hear i am sorry from this in individual they'll never apologize when they do you wrong they'll manage to show you why they did it because of what you did and when it comes to humility they don't know anything about humility but they'll always tell you that you should be humble you know they exaggerate all their skills and you know all their attributes but it's clear that these individuals um love only one person and that's themselves so as we go through 2021 and if we're all looking for peace and love and tranquility we have to also remember that the people we invite in our space can make a big difference in us maintaining that or at least getting closer to that, that peace that you're seeking. If you understand the nature of some individuals, you have to be able to say, look, I don't want to associate with these kind of person because you would know and you must have friends or relatives or whoever you deal with at your work, for example, when you're around them, all they do is bring down your mood. They will just change the atmosphere, you know, present, presenting themselves to be one thing. But in reality, you know them, you can see who they are. And even though they might be this outgoing, seem so wonderful and so great, you know, they oftentimes are, you know, like energy vampires. And they will draw you out and bring out the worst parts of you. The fact that they're so self-absorbed, um, you know, making everything be about them, they will offend you and then you will turn around and find yourself apologizing for things that they do to you. Now, some of you are in workplaces and you've had this experience because I have. I've worked in environments where people were blatantly disrespectful. And, you know, there are other words I could use to describe them. And when I would stand up and speak up for myself, these ones would cry. And, you know, just to avoid all that, you know, being the black girl in the ring, I used to be the one to, you know, sh sh it's okay because you don't want to come across as someone was making, making it, you know, unpleasant for other folks. And so when you're around these folks, you feel like you have to be walking on eggshells. And um, when you're hanging out in social, you know, events or occasion, you know, it's when they ask you a question, you just have to turn the question back to them to say, you know, what about you? Because they don't want to hear your story. They just want to talk about themselves. So if you know anyone in your work, in your family, your friends that, you know, when they ask a question, they only ask it trying to be polite, but they're not polite. They're like, as I said, they're controlling 
They have the sense of entitlement. You know, they have low empathy and very high control. They don't make good partner in friendship or love. Stay blessed, everybody. I don't want this to cut off.